On the build show today, we're gonna to take a tour of this beautiful 1920s remodel edition project right in the edge of downtown Austin, Texas. Now this 1920s house has been restored on the front of the house, so it looks just like it did in the neighborhood. But on the back, as you can see here, we've got a very contemporary edition. We're gonna take a behind the scenes tour today of this project from Foursquare Builders. We're also gonna take a look at some really typical framing details and some not so typical details, including what I'm standing on here, this pier and beam section. There's a lot of cool details in this house. Come join me for a tour, let's get going. Okay, let me set the scene for you. This house originally built in the 1920s, pretty typical Austin bungalow with a front porch. And we needed to remodel this house so that it looked really like it did originally in the 1920s when it was built. But the builder had a lot of challenges here, very sloping lot, a contemporary addition on the backside and a very difficult foundation. So let's start at the porch and we'll take our tour from there. Okay, we're fighting the spray foam crew, which is about to start. So let's walk the outside, then we'll jump inside. But the first thing I wanted you to notice was this porch. Now the builder had to basically rebuild this porch so that all the dimensions were as they were in the 1920s. And in fact, the palette of materials is gonna be exactly the same as well. They've reused the front windows, they've rebuilt the front door. Now they've got new wood siding and new soffit going up, and frankly, new framing for the roof line, but it's gonna be the exact same dimensions, the exact same look as the house originally had. What's different though, is they're gonna be doing a waterproof deck here with deck boards on top of this. Now the builder's done a good job of protecting this TPO. You'll also notice that he's got his posts in and these are solid and secure, and then he's got his TPO going to that. Good job on the protection. But then as we walk around the side of the house, as you can see, very different house from the front. We've got a very contemporary pool deck and pool. Now it looks like we're slab on grade here, but remember I said this is a pier and beam house. Keep in mind where we're standing here on this concrete deck. I'm gonna show you how this is built underneath. Now on a future episode, we're gonna get into these gorgeous low end lift and slide windows and door system. So I'm not gonna spend too much time on that right now, but I do wanna point out that the builder is using this Zip 2.0 system. Now this is 5 8 a Zip, that's the brown version. The green version is 7 16 And I really like how this builder is using the fluid applied. Great job by the guys at Foursquare. Interesting enough though, I talked to Kevin, the project manager yesterday. Because of the corners being a little difficult on the fluid applied, he decided to go ahead and use the tape on all the corners and then all the other details he did in the fluid applied you also notice he did the tape first so he could lay that fluid applied on top of that. And look how easy that fluid applied makes all these details. He's got an outdoor kitchen here and all these pipes coming through here, these would be really difficult to flash traditionally, but with that fluid applied, it makes, whew, makes everything really easy. Well done, guys. On the next episode, we're also gonna talk about this waterproofing that he's got here, so I won't spend too much time on that. But I do wanna mention that on the outside of these windows, Kevin did a fantastic job of job site protection. You'll notice he's got two layers of protection. He's got the glass protected with that blue film, and then he's got this white tape all the way around there. I'll put a link uh, in the description to the manufacturer, because actually I can't remember who makes that white tape, but I was really impressed with Kevin and his job site protection. Super important to protect that glass and those frames. Now let's walk over here. This is actually the master bedroom, and this is the porch that's off the master. You notice they've got a hot tub, they've got a pool, all perfectly in alignment with this low end lift and slide door here. Let's see if we can get in here, there we go. Okay. Ooh, man, that's pretty. Okay, now we get into some of the framing details. And what you're seeing for this framing, this is the back portion of the house, which is all brand new construction. This is pretty typical to how we build here in Austin, Texas. I'm a big fan of Advantech decking, and this is their inch and an eighth decking. You also notice we've got a trust roof on this house. Now this is a pretty low slung contemporary house. You'll notice that the roof trusses actually have some slope built into them. And as you look up at those two by fours, you'll notice those are also giving you some additional slope on this really low pitched flat roof up here. But it is pretty typical to see roof trusses. We're gonna look at the floor framing downstairs in a minute but underneath us here is also a floor truss system. Now one thing I wanted to point out while we're in here is check out the string lines on the ceiling. 
Most of the time when we get plans from architects, they include a reflected ceiling plan or an RCP. And that reflected ceiling plan is really important for us as a builder because we need to know what's the layout for the lights and all the other mechanicals that are in there. Now, if you're a builder like me, it's really difficult to get those all lined up and correct. Here's how to do it, and you can still see what the builder did. They had the electrician run the string lines and put the cans in first, but not wire them. And that way, all the HVAC boots, all the low voltage, all the fire sprinklers, everything else that's in that ceiling can be lined up with those cans, which are gonna be part of that RCP. Now, here's a tip from this builder that I really like. Once those cans are in, he's putting a laser plumb bob down on that can, so he shines it up and that can is gonna be directly above. Then he makes a circle with an X on it with a Sharpie. You also notice there's kind of a dark spot around there. Once he Sharpies it, he sprays it with some clear spray paint. And now, when he gets into the drywall phase, he can take a look at the ceiling and it's reflected onto the floor. So it makes it really easy to try and figure out, hey, did the drywall guys cover up the can and not roto zip it out because we've got all these locations. That's a great tip from this builder. Now this floor is gonna have a hardwood floor on it later, so this is gonna get covered up. So be cautious about that if you're in a basement with exposed concrete. But in this case, with all this framing getting covered later, great tip. Okay, another thing I wanted to show you in here is this builder is getting prepped for uh, recessed base details. So he had his finished carpenters come in and laser a line all the way around the room and install this plywood. This is just some cheap half inch plywood and that's basically going to be a drywall stop for the drywall contractor. So now the drywall contractor can install his 5 8 sheetrock directly to the studs, drop it down on here, and this is going to leave him a stop to go to. So that later, after the drywall is finished, he can pop these out. These are just screwed in. These get popped out. The drywall's in place. He'll lay his hardwood floors, and then his finished carpenters will put the reglet on and install the base later on. That's a great detail if you're doing recessed base. Okay, a couple of things I wanted to point out while we're here in the master. Pretty typical or traditional in Austin, Texas to see PEX piping. This looks like this is all Vega PEX on here. And then we're also putting copper bullets on on the outside so that you'll have a pretty traditional copper fitting um, crimp on, not a crimp on, a uh, compression fitting rather on the outside. So they'll take a copper tube cutter, they'll cut that off and they'll put a compression fitting on there. And interesting to see that he's using all Doug fir framing materials in this master. These are 10 foot ceilings on here, and that Doug fir is really nice for framing. It's gonna be really straight on a wall that's 10 foot or less. Let's walk out to the family room area, and we're gonna check out a couple of details out there. Okay, before we get to the family room, I noticed something else I wanted to point out. We've got a, a downstairs area here, and I love seeing these safety rails. If you're not familiar with these, this is called the safety boot. It's a little plastic boot that you actually bolt down into your framing. You can see here it's got a little carriage uh, bolt with a washer on there. And these are not brand new. Kevin, the project manager, is pulling these at the end of the job and reusing them. So you're going to get lots of jobs out of this. But what it does is it allows you to slide a 2x4 in here and then build a temporary rail system. But what's cool about this temporary rail, if we can back up here just a second, is look how it's not touching anything. The drywall guys can hang all this drywall and this temporary rail is not in the way at all. And then simply later, when the finished carpenters come to put the rails in, all I do is unscrew this and this pops off. It doesn't mess with the drywall. So if we would have nailed this on traditionally, like on the face here, we would have had to remove that and it would be unsafe during the drywall phase. So that's, that's a great tip. They run about 20 or 30 bucks each and you can reuse them for many, many years. I also like how this builder is putting a fire extinguisher right here so that he's got one of these in all the main levels. Okay, let's go check out the family room. Okay, now we're in the main family room space. Again, check out our future video where we're gonna be talking about these doors and the view through those doors. But what's interesting in this space is you notice we've got taller ceilings in here and the builder switched from Doug fir to these studs right here. This is a timber strand LSL stud. This is basically a man-made stud. It almost looks like OSB. And what you're getting here is a super straight stud, almost like a metal stud but it installs just like traditional lumber. So that now the electrician, the plumber, they can drill through it as normal. There's no additional uh, precautions we need to make when we're drilling through a metal stud, but we've got that perfectly straight wall here. The other thing I like about what this builder's done is check out what he's done for his nail plate. So anytime we've got a pipe in a wall or a wire in a wall, 
we want to protect that from that drywall nail penetrating it later. And we've got to put these plates on, but these plates a lot of times will pooch out the drywall. And if we've got that really pretty smooth drywall, we don't want a bump in that drywall. So what the builder's done is he's come through before those nail plates went on and he's used the power planer. In fact, we have one of our office from Bosch that's a cordless model. How cool would that be? Just come in and use that cordless model, auger out a little section so that now when those nail plates go on, look how flush they're gonna be with the drywall. It's not gonna pooch out at all. That's a great tip from these guys. Hey guys, quick interruption to today's video. I know how busy you are as a builder and remodeler. You've got jobs that the schedule's changing all the time. You're communicating with a ton of subcontractors and you're trying to track down and sign those change orders with clients. It's not easy, but I've got a solution for you. Builder Trend. I moved my business to Builder Trend about a year ago and it's made a dramatic impact on my business. Schedule a demo with these guys today, buildertrend.com or there'll be a link in the description below and use code RICINGER60. That's gonna give you a 60 day money back guarantee. Back to today's video. Two more things I wanna point out on this level. Check this out, the builder's got a beautiful plan desk ready to go. I love seeing plan desks on the job. Now he's using it for some storage because the spray foam guys are here, but he's got his plans ready to go right here. You can roll this out, gives you a good surface to have a meeting, to have a workspace, and to make sure you review those plans with your trades. The other thing you'll notice that he's got right here is his rigid shop vacs all stage. This builder actually has one for each level of the house. So on a three level house, he's got three of them, one on each level. That's a great idea. That way the trades can really keep it clean. And you'll notice this house with the spray foam crews about to start here, beautifully clean. He did a great job of cleaning this up. This is really the stage that you want every bay shot backed out. You want the house looking good. And as we talked about those LSLs a minute ago, here's a really good spot for those LSLs. We've got a two story wall here with our staircase going down. This is probably, I don't know, 20, 22 feet top to bottom. And if you were to sight down this wall, oh man, that is just beautifully straight. Great location for those man-made studs. You'll also see that he used them in tile areas and areas where he's got cabinetry. Because those, those studs are totally straight, when we push our countertop in there or when we're doing tile work, really nice to have those. And while we're in the stairwell, by the way, look at this blocking. Any of the finished carpenters watching this video are gonna love seeing these big two by 12 blocks in there. So when he puts his handrail in, he's got really good blocking for that. While we're on the stairs too, traditional in Austin for us to build our stairs in rough framing at a dimension that's just lower than what the finished height. So these are probably gonna be some one inch hardwood treads, which is what I also typically use. And then he's using Advantech, again, that inch and an eighth to glue and screw these, these sub treads on. And then you'll also notice he's got a, a skirt board that he's just mocking up here to show what that's gonna look like. But the idea is the drywall is gonna slip behind the stairs right there. And then later the finished carpenter is gonna put his skirt on and build the stairs out. That's how we typically do it here in Austin. Okay, let's look at some basement details. Okay, so now we can start to see some of those pier and beam details. We're at the front of the house out here, and this is the garage space. And at the front of the house, you can see we've got a steel beam here that actually is carrying the load from above on the front of the house. So that steel beam is resting on a column here, and then it's resting on a concrete wall here. And then from this point forward, this was all the waterproof deck that you were walking on on the front porch. And we've got garage space underneath there. You'll also notice that he's got a giant cantilever on this side. What happened was he's got a very tight old neighborhood. He's got a house really close to us. So instead of excavating within a couple feet of the proper line, he backed that excavation up by another several feet so that now he's like 10 feet or more from the property line and the house actually cantilevers over by five feet. What a cool detail. The other thing I want to point out up here is this floor truss system. Now this is really typical for us in Texas, but I don't see this as much in other parts of the country. I love floor trusses. You see this is a two by four truss and then there's gusset plates on there holding those trusses on. And look how wide open that is. It allows us to run all of our electrical, all of our plumbing, all of our duct work, which we often have in this truss space as well, because we don't often have basements here in Texas. And all that's run easily without any drilling, cutting, or sawing. It makes for this 
space down here really clean because the electricians didn't have to drill anything and it makes it really easy to run everything. The other thing I wanted to mention down in this, in this garage space is the builder is getting set for the trim stage and look at these trim carts he's made. I love this. These are two carts that he's made out of two by fours and just some scrap plywood and these are meant to receive the doors in the house. Now when the finished carpenters come and hang the doors, they're actually going to take the doors off again after they've been hung and store them here for safekeeping. And what he's done is he's made a cart so those doors can be actually be laid down on their side. It's really critical not to store your, door, your doors up vertically and, and lean them against the wall because if you do that, over time they're going to end up with this bend and you'll have a bow in your door. Instead, lay them down, put them on a cart like this, put a sheet of foam in between each door, and check this out too, he's also keeping his, his door protection from job to job. These are some ram board uh, jam protectors, so he's going to slide those on his jams. And he's saving all of his packaging from previous jobs, so he's got a corner protector. When you're doing that level five smooth drywall with those sharp corners, under construction they can really get beat up. So Kevin is preparing ahead of time to put a bunch of corner protection on both his trim and his drywall corners. Nice job. All right, let's see if we can get ahead of the spray foam guys and let's go take a look at this other crawl space. Hey, before we go in, one other thing I want to point out. This builder is using a detail that I love. This is a uh, recessed box by Arlington. I think it's called the Arlington Inbox. And it allows you to actually recess your plug into the wall instead of that really ugly bubble cover. Now with the fluid applied from Huber, it really makes integration for both air sealing and water sealing really tight and nice. But check out that outlet. It's recessed back in. Once the cover is on there and the stucco gets applied, that's all you're going to see. You're not going to have that ugly cover that bubbles out it's gonna be all recessed back in there. That's a great little detail. Okay, now this is what I wanted to show you. Remember upstairs where we were on that concrete deck right before we went into the pool? This is how the builder's done it. This is what's called a pan deck system. Used all the time in commercial buildings, but we don't see it that much in residential. And what you're seeing here is a galvanized, corrugated pan deck. This is a product that you can buy uh, lots of places. Let's see if I can shine my flashlight on it and that corrugation eventually will receive concrete on top like we saw upstairs and you can see it's bearing about every five feet across on some steel beams that have also been galvanized. So now when you're upstairs on that deck we've actually got a deck that's, that looks like concrete but in fact it's actually on top of air or it's part of this crawl space. Again you can see he's got his floor trusses back here and then he's got that inch and eighth uh, decking on top of that so that's going to make a really stiff floor. Now this is a storage area that's part of a crawl space. It kind of looks like a full-size basement. But what's interesting about this is the builder built a separate wall in between this crawl space here and this area. Now this is the pool wall. This has been a gunited wall that's going to have a pool on the other side. And it's already had a little bit of efflorescence. And the builder wanted to separate that kind of ugly wall that would have some efflorescence and possibly some condensation or sweating from the rest of the space, which eventually would get probably dehumidified and made into some nice storage space. I really like how he did that. He also galvanized all his steel that's going to be in this space because he's worried that it might be in a higher humidity zone. Great job by Foursquare on that. You also see he's got vapor proof lights and he's got an exhaust fan out of this space so that we'll be, we'll be continually exhausting a little bit out of this space. All right, last thing then we'll wrap the video up. Let's walk over here and see if we can check out this mechanical room down here. I didn't spend any time talking about it upstairs, but he's got a really interesting VRF system in this house that's variable refrigerant flow, which means that he can have one compressor on the outside and then multiple indoor units that are fed from that. And here's, a, here's some of the magic of that system right here. This is a branch box. So you've got a free online right here, which is going to come in from the compressor on the outside, and that's going to bring the main free online to this box. Now, I don't know what magic's happening in here. But what's, what you're seeing here is all the smaller Freon lines are going to go out to the indoor units. So each one of those units might be a one, two, or three ton unit. That could be a mini split head. That could be a low static pressure unit. It looks like kind of a, a couple pizza boxes stacked up. And it's a lower flow, a smaller amount of CFMs than a big blower unit. And you can also have a three, four, or five ton big blower unit with a really big compressor on the outside. That's really cool to see. Last thing I'm going to point out over here and then we'll wrap it up. 
Look at the great job the electrician did. This is a great way to interview an electrician is to come out and see a finished job. And these guys, man, they've done a great job. A neat wiring install where everything's labeled means you've got a really good electrician. That's a great way to interview somebody. Now this looks to me like it's a Homeworks system, which is gonna be a whole house lighting control. And then these are gonna be the fuse boxes for the house. But uh, I'm not sure who this electrician is. Great job though, guys. Very, very nice. All right, guys, hopefully you learned something on this tour. Stay tuned for some future videos from this job site. We actually shot another video over here yesterday where we were talking about the low end window and door package in a really cool lift and slide system inside a curtain wall window. Man, there's some beautiful stuff. We're gonna be talking to the builder and the architect and the window manufacturer, looking at some of those details, how they install them, how they waterproof them. Stay tuned for that video. And Jordan's gonna come over here and spend a little time with Kevin talking about his organization system and his job trailer. If you're not currently a Build Show subscriber, hit that subscribe button below. We've got new content every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show.